This group will examine and formulate regulatory policy regarding the current, current and future uses of embryonic stem cell based technologies. Please welcome Eric Schulze. How's everyone doing? Fantastic. This is a great day to be giving an address today. Um, coincidentally, today is the Obama administration's inaugural National Laboratory Day uh, to try to bring in new scientists into the field of science. So I think it's fitting to give an address today. And I want to thank the student government for allowing me to speak. It's quite an honor. So how often have we been introduced to a partner's parents or they chat with someone at a bar? And we inevitably dread this question. We inevitably get asked, so what do you do for a living? And as a scientist, I can tell you, as we stumble our way through explaining endosymbiotic theory, DNA replication, and multiple regression analysis, we are inevitably met back with a bored and confused look from the person's very happiness. And this is unfortunate, because we know that science is not boring, right? Now, we're the few and proud that got excited when viral capsid formation was discussed in, in freshman biology. Now, some might say we're a special breed of human to think that's interesting, more akin to Gollum from Lord of the Rings than an actual human being, you know, living in our caves that we call labs, um, possibly forgetting to eat and bathe, for that matter, forgetting what it's like to interact with other human beings, or, oh, who could forget sleeping on that cold heart slab we call lab bench? Now, as we all step back in the light of society, we need to call from the messages of our mentors to survive. Without them, we might have never raised an eyebrow to a suspicious medical claim made in the news or had the insight to create the next cancer-fighting therapy. It is for this and much else that I must thank my mentor, Dr. Chi Long Ying, and I ask our graduates today to collectively thank our, our mentors for making us the scientists that we are today. However, in crafting this address, I found myself thinking not about what I was taught in science, but what I was not taught throughout my life as a student of science. Allow me to explain. You see, in my opinion, science needs to fire its PR agent, okay? We're in Hollywood, so this seems appropriate, right? We live in a time where the role of science and scientists in the public sphere is diminishing. Why is that? Well, only two generations ago, to be a scientist, even one that worked for the government, was considered patriotic and noble, a position people gladly looked up to. Now, the role of the scientists in the media is relegated to people who give good sound bites or just happen to be wearing a lab coat. I hope you all hear changes, mentality. And I believe that in large part this aspect can change if we debunk the misconceptions about what science is certainly not. So I've compiled a short list of things that I was never taught about science. Like, you can think of this as a new science press kit. Only in LA, right? Okay, first. To borrow from an eminent cosmologist and teacher, Phil Plate, quote, without imagination and creativity, science is a dictionary. Why was this not said on day one of every science class we have ever taken? Better put, I think, the bold-faced words you see in your textbooks are not just there to consternate young freshmen, but rather as an ode to those scientists bold enough to see and describe which had not been observed prior. I cannot think of a human endeavor that calls from more creative, imaginative, and right-brained activities as science. I mean, think about it, guys. Each one of you here has acquired the skills needed to create symphonies, mathematics, to visualize the inner workings of cells, biochemical pathways, and the patterns inherent to disease spreading, the visual arts, and the ability to effectively communicate your discoveries, not just to scientists, but to the world at large, through skills cultivated in literature and poetry. Science has made you a walking toolbox of education, and you are here because you're able to dip into a skill set that few are willing to develop. Second, science is the most anti-scientific process you will ever perform. Remember, safe ideas are rarely rewarded with Nobel Prizes. You'll often need to come up with a creative, simple, maybe counterintuitive idea that can be tested in a rigorous, methodical, and repeatable manner. The idea itself is often crazy, seemingly illogical at first. However, after some careful reasoning and a scientifically sound experiment, the answer can be accepted or nullified by your findings. The key point 
is that ideas themselves need not be scientifically acceptable at their inception, but your methods to test them must be. Third, science is not just a method, but rather a transformative way in which to think. And this is the one I wish I'd learned earliest. Science arrives from the Greek root skire, meaning to know, to distinguish, or separate. And not the kind of knowing that says, I know how to cook pancakes. I mean the kind of knowing that says, I not only know why pancakes exist, but how they're created, and I think I've figured out a better way of explaining why they're so delicious. <laughs> and like the bell that cannot be unrung, you begin to see the world as it is. And then you begin to question. And you revel in your inquisitiveness. You delight in your lack of knowledge about the world around you because you know that no matter how much you learn, there's always more to the story. And you have the chance to be the first to discover it, to help others understand it. You realize you are both wildly insignificant in this universe and important simultaneously because you are but one amazing localized collection of carbon, a momentary decrease in entropy in a cosmic ocean. And yet we as graduates of professional science are able to understand this concept, and it inspires us. And as we move into the next chapter of our lives, we will continue to search out knowledge and explore our cosmos, the majestic world of science. Congratulations to all the graduates today. Thank you all very much. <laughs>